Hey everyone, it's Liz Brassoff from Thrust Flight. I'm the chief flight instructor here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the soft field landing. This is a maneuver you'll perform on the private pilot check ride as well as the commercial pilot check ride. A soft field landing is a landing technique used for a runway that's other than hard surface. So it could be grass, gravel, sand, dirt, maybe a sandbar. All of these would be considered a soft field and perfect for the soft field landing technique. So this is soft field landing. We're just basically simulating what is gonna happen when uh, you land in grass or an unprepared field um, once you get your private pilot. So it's like a normal traffic pattern. So what we're gonna do is a beam my touchdown point. I'm gonna go ahead and pull power out to about 1800. Start a slow, gradual descent. Uh, what we want to do is we're going to main we're going to try to so uh, touch down as softly as we can, but also maintaining uh, the nose wheel off the ground as long as we can. So that what that's going to require is that once we touch down, we need to maybe add a little bump of power, but also as the aircraft slows down, you need to hold, pull the yoke further and further back. The difficulty in this is that all right, let's go flaps to 10. The difficulty in this is that uh, you want to maintain a smooth kind of Pull the yoke back smoothly enough, but not sharply enough that you tail strike. Uh, Gradual, the but matching the, the speed and weight of the aircraft sink. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's pause there for a second. So, Land says we want to keep the nose wheel off the ground as long as possible, but we didn't have time while we're flying in the traffic pattern to really break down why. The reason why is imagine landing on this grass, gravel, or maybe snow packed strip, right? If the nose wheel is allowed to have all the weight of the aircraft on it or have um, a quick touchdown, it will sink into that soft surface, which could cause the aircraft to tip or to really dig in and, and cause some damage there, maybe to the propeller or the aircraft. So we want to keep the nose high as it touches down and continue rolling with the nose high in the air like this so that it's the least amount of weight here as this nose comes down and keeps any forward momentum from bringing the aircraft's nose down into that soft surface. So that's why he's talking so much about applying the back elevator pressure or keeping the nose off the ground is there's just a lot of risk there for it to dig in on such a soft surface. All right, so a little slow, so let me just nose over a bit. Rockwall traffic, thrust 44, left base 17, Rockwall. Okay, so Land says he's a little slow. We've just turned base. You're gonna fly your normal air speeds on downwind, base, and final, unless your aircraft prescribes a different approach speed. We're flying the Cessna 172, so on base, typically we're doing 75 knots, and that's what he's looking for here. On final, we'll still approach at about 65 knots. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and throw my second notch of flaps in. Maintain about 70. So we're still flying a normal pattern as we both mentioned, Lan and myself here. Uh, so he's anticipating the turn to final here. We're gonna enter it just like you would on a normal traffic pattern. And then we start making some adjustments. Really the soft field touchdown is a normal pattern until we get to the actual touchdown piece. So you're seeing him do some uh, coaching that's hopefully very familiar to the normal landings you've already been performing. Let's go ahead and anticipate the final. Short final, look at that. You see how far that went? Uh, what uh, am I looking at? Uh, oh, the little, yeah. yeah. Turn coordinator. Tell traffic. All uh, right, so we'll. So if you saw, he pointed on the screen to the turn coordinator. What he's trying to point out to me as a student is that we needed more rudder application in the turn. Whenever you're making a turn, you typically need rudder the same direction you're turning as well as an aileron input to keep the aircraft coordinated. Really important when we're operating this close to the ground and especially this slow. Full flaps here, we'll maintain 65. Three six circle land. Trim it out just a little bit more. Rockwell traffic thrust 44, final 17, full stop, Rockwell. So you can see in this top picture, he's got the runway aligned. We're making a normal approach as far as altitude for the runway. And now he's going to start talking about the speed changes and uh, pitch changes for the soft field touchdown. All right, yes, everything's good. 65 down, a little high. 
Okay, so how are you correcting if you feel a little high? If I feel a little high, then I'll actually pull out a little bit of power uh, and then dump the nose over just a little bit to kind of descend a little bit lower. Pitch for air speed, air speed for uh, power for the approach, pitch for, pitch for air speed, power for the approach. So Land got a little bit tongue tied there, but he's trying to tell you to make the normal corrections you would just like any landing that you're coming in. If I'm high, I need to be reducing power and lowering the nose to get back on the appropriate altitude and glide path for my runway. If we're low, we need to add power to slow the descent or even level off if it's that severe, and you'll make a pitch change as well. Okay, so power lines, and I'll make the runway. So we're at 65. I'm gonna go ahead and pull a little power out. Go to idle. So he said we're at 65. We're approaching the runway. I'm gonna pull the power out. So we want to start slowing down to come in for our touchdown. But on the soft field landing, what's different is I want to touch down at the appropriate pitch attitudes, that would be main wheels first, nose wheel in the air, and I also want to have the minimum amount of sink. What the ACS standards, the Airman Certification Standards, or what the FAA is trying to tell you is it shouldn't be a plop down onto the runway, right? It should be the softest touchdown you could make because this ground is not hard surface. It's not concrete, it's not asphalt, right? So we really want to make a gentle, soft touchdown as we um, meet the, the runway here. Um, so th we do that by either leaving in some power or managing our float to have the minimum amount of sink rate. Basically, you've still got forward momentum and it just really slowly meets the ground. So let's see how land performs. Okay, that's... There's saw, and all right, we're down, we're gonna hold. This. So right there, if you hear that whining, ee, it's the stall warning horn, which means he's got the nose in a really high position as he's coming down. That's fine as we're in the flare for landing. We wouldn't wanna hear that too high in the air, um, but it's showing that we've got a really high angle of attack, which is good, because we wanna touch down main wheels first, and like I said, minimum amount of sink. Hold the nose up, we're gonna hold the nose up, slowing down gradually, hold the nose up, nose is still up, we're about 20 knots. Good, so if you've noticed, his main wheels are on the ground at this point in the video, but the nose wheel is high in the air. It has not come down and met the ground at all. And that's exactly what we want on a soft field. He did excellent performance here. He's got the main wheels on the ground. He's kept the nose wheel high. So it's rolling all the way down the runway here. No pressure at all on the ground from the nose wheel because it's not even touching the ground. And as we continue to slow, he's gonna have full back pressure on the elevator and the aircraft will gradually set the nose down. That means we've got um, all the weight on the main wheels. He's holding his controls as far as possible and the nose wheel has come down on its own. That's an excellent soft field landing rollout. The other thing you'll notice is the center line is moving right in between his wheels as you're looking in the video here. So he's keeping perfect longitudinal alignment with his airplane. As the airplane's rolling down the runway, he's making rudder corrections to keep it on the center line. That's really hard. As a new student, it's a pretty common mistake that you start to veer off to one side or the other, because now, instead of in a normal landing where the nose wheel comes down fairly early, the nose is really high, so it makes it hard to see in front of you. But it's an important piece of this landing is that we still maintain the center line and maintain longitudinal alignment. That's so. Uh... And we're still, nose wheel is still off the ground. So take a look, look at his hands here and how far back he's got the control yoke to keep that nose wheel high. In a moment here, he's probably gonna release some pressure to let the nose wheel come down. We're doing a simulation of a soft field landing. We're not actually on grass, as you can see. We're also coming near the end of our runway, so he might actually have to let the nose come down. Awesome. Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so you had lots of back pressure there, keeping the nose off really long. That was much longer than a normal landing. Uh, why does that matter on a soft field landing? Because if you run into, if you uh, let the nose down too early too fast, you run the risk of the nose wheel digging into the mud or the grass. Okay. So, or shearing off or, you know, potentially causing a prop strike because your uh, nose wheel collapsed or your nose wheel dug into some mud and now your prop is spinning into the ground. So if you notice, Land kept the elevator back pressure in all the way till we've exited the runway. That's another piece of the Airman Certification Standards, is it says that you'd maintain the elevator input until exiting the soft area, which typically we simulate ends when you exit the runway and you're now on the taxiway. I think that's the longest I've ever 
held a a nose wheel off the ground. Nose wheel off the ground. So the last piece I want to share with you about the soft field landing is don't forget to put your crosswind correction in. You're focusing so hard on landing soft, on keeping the nose wheel high in the air on the touchdown and in the after landing roll that we often forget our basic private pilot skill of putting in crosswind correction. So make sure you're still putting in the aileron and the rudder inputs to keep you aligned with the center line and landing longitudinally aligned with your aircraft. Uh, they're going to give you no leeway on your check ride with that. That wraps up today's video on soft field landings. We hope you liked it. If you have questions, leave us a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.